Good morning, everyone. It is my privilege to welcome you to Diffusion Cell Operators session on day three of IVRT IVPT workshop, as just introduced by Dr. Pali. My name is Ron Wang, and I'm the acting associate director at Division of Bioequivalence One in OGD FDA. I will be moderator this morning. In the past two days, we have learned a lot about IVRT IVPT from method development, validation, data analysis to its scientific and regulatory uses. In this session, you will be hearing four presentations, which will focus on diffusion cell apparatus used in IVRT and IVPT studies. Our four speakers today are from FDA, CIOs specializing in dermatological and transdermal product development, and global technology companies that specialize in analytical test instruments for the pharmaceutical industry. They are going to talk about scientific principles and practical challenges from using diffusion cell apparatus in IVRT and IVPT studies, and share their insights and considerations for design and use of diffusion cell apparatus. So as we uh, will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, I would encourage our audience to think of questions when our speakers are presenting and save the questions to the Q&A session. In addition, uh, the bi um, biography is available online for our speakers and the panelists. Now moving along to our session, um, please welcome Dr. Ahmed Zidane, who will be speaking to us on diffusion cell apparatus, scientific principles, and practical challenges. Dr. Zidane is a se senior pharmacologist in the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality in CEDAR FDA. Dr. Zidane leads the topical and transdermal drug product laboratories in the Division of Product Quality Research in OPQ, and provides hands-on trainings to reviewers on various topics, including in vitro release and uh, permeation testing. He is a member of the transdermal working groups of CEDAR. Dr. Zidane, uh, the podium is yours. So thank you, Dr. Rang, for the nice introduction. And uh, thank you, the planning committee, for uh, your invitation. Uh, to share our thoughts about diffusion cell apparatus uh, that's used for IVRT and IVBT testing. So before I start my presentation, I will go over a disclaimer that this presentation reflects my views and shouldn't be considered to represent FDA's uh, views or policies. Uh, I'm working in the Office of uh, Pharmaceutical Quality and talking about the quality so a quality of any product uh, is uh, is that uh, uh, it is meeting the expectation of the users, computers, cars, cell phones, whatever. And of course, the drugs are not different. And patients expect to have a safe and effective medicine so with every dose they are taking. So the pharmaceutical quality mission is assuring that every dose is safe, effective, and free of contamination and defects. And this is what gives the patients the confidence in their next dose of medicine. And of course, topical drug products also are not different. So talking about the quality of topical drug products, diffusion testing is one of the principles that's used for performance testing of drug products, mainly in IVRT and IVBT uh, procedures. So for IVRT, the drug is diffused from the drug product to the skin surface. So it is more a function of the matrix of the drug products and how easy is the drug to be diffused from the formulation to the skin surface. But when we go to IVBT, it, it reflects more about the interaction of the released API with the skin for the delivery to various layers of skin, stratum corneum or epidermis, or even goes down to the systemic circulation to produce a systemic action. So diffusion testing in general, it depends on many factors. Diffusion test parameters is, uh, should be optimized in order to have a meaningful results, which depends mainly on the physical chemical properties of the drug substance, as well as the matrix that's used. 
So, uh, of course, for permeation testing, physiological or biological condition and factors of the skin is of prime importance in designing this type of diffusion testing. So, talking about diffusion, I'm going to cover in my presentation today the diffusion mechanisms as well as diffusion cells that's used for this purpose, diffusion apparatus, and some of the technical challenges that we are facing in our labs and uh, mostly in all labs is that's running this type of testing and how to optimize diffusion parameters. And we are going to talk briefly about the qualification parameter for the apparatus and then we are going to conclude. So talking about the mechanism of uh, diffusion, in order to design a diffusion testing, we need to understand or, or to focus more on the diffusion mechanism what we are expecting or how we are expecting the API or active drug substance uh, to diffuse through this matrix. So the first model that developed by Katz and Paulson in 1971 shows us the simple equation fix of fixed law for diffusion. And this equation assumes the diffusion of uh, soluble drug molecules or soluble molecules from uh, its solution to another diffusion media. And this is done according to concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration. And this is also assumed that this media is uh, isotropic, means that the diffusions, uh, diffusion properties is the same all over all direction around the drug molecules. And there is no any barrier for diffusion other than the matrix or the, the media itself. And uh, talking about the skin, the skin it itself is iso it's not an isotropic uh, media, so it has multiple layers that allow interaction with the API at, at some extent, and this is also can affect the diffusion. So looking at this equation, we know that the flux of, uh, for drug diffusion depends on the partition coefficient and partition coefficient, it depends mainly on the interaction of the drug molecule with the media itself. And this is uh, uh, like, this is looking at the factors that affecting the solubility and the interaction with the molecules of the media or the structure of this media. And then talking about diffusion coefficient or diffusivity of this uh, APR or, the, or this molecule, through the media, it depends on many factors. Some of these factors related to the drug molecules itself, like uh, molecular size, uh, molecular weight, uh, branching, as well as uh, hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity of the drug molecules. And then other factors that related to the diffusion matrix or diffusion media regarding its viscosity, its ion concentration, etc. And of course, the most important parameter is the concentration gradient, which is the different in drug concentration between these two media. As, uh, as, as, as it is bigger, the difference in concentration, then we are expecting larger flux. And of course, the diffusion length or length of travel, as it is increased, you are expecting the flux to be decreased. So looking at this equation, we can simply design a simple diffusion test uh, parameters that is uh, that can be used for simple diffusion uh, experiments. However, it is not as simple as we have seen the, 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 the recent model uh, that's developed by Dr. Takura and uh, Bill Higuchi in 1960s, it describes a release of solid drug particles uh, that is suspended in ointment. And we know that the chemical potential or activity of solid drug particles is very low compared to the, the, the soluble molecules or when we go to the molecular level. So now we have another step before diffusion, which is dissolution of this uh, solid drug particles. And diffusion is happening due to the Brownian motion or due to the activity of the soluble molecules. So they develop a more sophisticated equation, and this equation depends also in the difference between bulk concentration of the drug in, uh, in the bulk of this media, as well as uh, the solution uh, rate, as well as uh, diffusivity of the soluble drug molecules. And this is more, more simplified later to have uh, a linear correlation between the amount of the drug that's permeated or diffused against the root of uh, time. And uh, this, this equation had been changed to be more complicated 
when we are looking to like different types of ointment that has uh, layers uh, of the drugs that's uniformly dissolved in it. And in this case, the mechanism of the of diffusion may be different as the drug is released through uh, a moving uh, boundaries from the ointment and the depletion of each layer that is exposed to the media uh, due to the hydration. And this is what we have seen with the acyclovir uh, ointment. So now the equation is, 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 is more complicated because it depends on the initial concentration of the drugs that is uh, starting in each layer as well as uh, thickness of each layer that's diffusing uh, and etc. So if we wanted to design a, a diffusion test, we need to consider most of these factors and we need to know what is the critical factors for diffusion so that we can have a controlled diffusion uh, experiment. Moving, moving to the permeation, uh, Dr. Franz and Dr. Lehmann uh, in 1995, they uh, developed uh, uh, a sophisticated or more complicated equation uh, for finite dose uh, application to as a skin as a thin layer over the skin, and they consider in their model the thickness of the stratum corneum as well as thickness of the applied formulation. So they consider the depletion of the this small layer at skin surface, and uh, they they have used their model to uh, understand or to predict the concentration of the API at a certain depth of the stratum corneum at any given time. So this is uh, more relevant to the clinically applied doses and very few studies have used it, this mathematical model. So understanding the diffusion parameter and diffusion kinetics, we are expecting to have a diffusion profiles and it is one of these two types. It is either infinite dose uh, profile or finite dose profile. When we have infinite dose profiles, we are expecting a steady state diffusion. And the slope of this state diffusion, it depends on many factors that we have described. However, we may observe a, a plateauing at the top end of the profile. And this plateauing may be due to dose depletion as well as non-sync condition when it, when like, um, when inappropriate uh, like uh, diffusion parameter had been used. And when we move the, to the finite dosing where the drug is applied in, in a very small dose uh, for diffusion, in this case, we may see an, the plateauing and this is due to the depletion. However, it is, it is not worthy to mention that the steady state uh, flux may not be obtained before the donor depletion becomes significant. And in this case, in order to, to, to determine the steady state flux, multiple dosing may, may be needed during the same experimental, uh, the same experiment. And uh, we can determine the flux by saturating the permeation uh, barrier or permeation media, for example, the skin, if it's used for this diffusion experiment. So going to the diffusion testing, the USP General Chapter 1724, as described yesterday, it, it gave us a very clear and uh, examples of diffusion uh, settings. And uh, this has opened up more innovation to the industry to come up with uh, uh, different and more advanced uh, diffusion testing that's using the same principle mentioned in this chapter. So this chapter is describing the different diffusion models and the, the, the Gold standard for diffusion is the vertical diffusion cells, and they talk about different membranes and uh, that's used for this purpose. And this is for in vitro performance uh, diffusion testing. And uh, in this one, in this chapter, it talks also about the diffusion kinetics and elucidating the equation that can be used to describe the diffusion mechanism. So it provides technical methodologies for the use of each model as well as it provides recommendation and guidelines for the test and parameters. And we, as we have seen yesterday, the new chapter 1002, it will be developed by USB to talk mainly about the diffusion membranes and characteristics and testing needing for diffusion membranes. So in this chapter, it is also worth mentioning that the in vitro performance testing not necessarily used to predict the in vivo performance of the drug. 
we know that the in vivo performance of the drug, it is more of the permeability function of the skin and the availability of the drug to systemic circulation or site of action in the skin. It depends mainly on the permeability as well as the barrier function of skin rather than diffusion from the, uh, from the matrix of the drug product. However, in vitro release testing may be used to predict any in vitro changes that may be altered the in vivo performance, and in order to know the in vitro uh, changes that can alter in vivo performance, more sophisticated models of in vitro in vivo correlations may be needed in this case in order to determine the safe space for in vitro release testing. And this safe, safe space for in vitro release testing, it is a space where any change in the in vitro performance criteria are not expected to have any change in the in vivo performance so that we can determine how these changes can be done to the drug product without any significant change to this in vivo performance. So some of these changes uh, are related to physical chemical characteristics of the API used or the excipients and uh, we have seen in bioequivalence uh, guidelines that uh, Q1 and Q2 changes may affect the in vivo performance and for similarity testing, Q1 and Q2 should be the same for reference and uh, tested drug products. And uh, formulation microstructure as well, which is Q3 characteristics, it may change the uh, in vitro performance as well as in vivo performance. The manufacturing process, uh, identifying the critical manufacturing parameters as well as the level of these changes is of prime importance in order to uh, predict the in vivo performance through these uh, models as I just mentioned. Shaping and storage and aging effects, as well as other formulation and critical process parameters. Also, these changes can be predicted through in vitro performance testing. So, several apparatus had been mentioned in the chapter, including the vertical diffusion cells, as well as immersion cell and the uh, special flusro cells that's used in USB apparatus for. Uh, it's also important to know that uh, because of the significant impact of the in vitro test parameters, uh, uh, the primary use of the in vitro test parameter is mainly for comparison testing and in which the, any difference in delivery rate is undesirable. And this is what I explained by the safe space for the in vitro performance characteristics. And uh, in this case, the comparison is used uh, in, uh, in, in bioequivalence, for example, uh, testing of uh, test to reference the drug product, as well as uh, load to load variability, as well as uh, different changes uh, or changes of the drug product at different levels. And this is mentioned clearly in the SUBAC guidance uh, of FDA. And uh, comparison of large formulation changes uh, by IVRT, uh, sometimes it may provide unmeaningful results unless we have an extensive validation that's performed so that sensitivity of the test is meaningful and correlated with the in vivo performance. As we can see here in this slide, the, the diffusion, different diffusion operators that is uh, mentioned in the uh, general chapter, and this including the static, uh, either vertical or side by side the diffusion cells. And we can have seen some models of uh, this type of cells and the immersion cells that's used in USB apparatus uh, settings. And as you can see the composition of the immersion cell, however, not so many applications are using immersion cells. And the flow through cells, and there is also some concerns about using flow through cells for this type of test. So we are going to go over uh, some of these diffusion apparatus in the next slides. So for the static uh, cells, either vertical or side by side, both of them are using uh, fixed, fixed volume uh, of the receptor chamber, as well as control temperature, and it has a sampling port uh, for collecting uh, samples, as well as it has a steering mechanism in order to ensure that the drug that's diffused uh, uh, from the formulation is cleared at the membrane uh, surface uh, so that uh, the flux is not affected uh, by the concentration or the, the tangential concentration of the drug behind the membrane. 
and for the side by side uh, diffusion cells uh, it it is uh, its usage for semi solid topical drug product may not be appropriate however it is used mainly for topical solutions because uh, the donor cells it has uh, it has some sort also of a steering mechanism so it is changing the, maybe it is a changing the microstructure over time so some of the technical consideration is using the static cells. It is mainly related to permeability of the drug uh, through the, the, the matrix or diffusivity of the drug from the matrix, as well as uh, receptor volume that's used in this uh, experiment. So in the case of using a highly permeable drug with large volume receptor, uh, chamber in this case uh, same condition are met and we may not have any analytical uh, problem for detectability and in case of highly permeable drug with a small receptor cells uh, or receptor uh, cell volume in this case non-sync condition may be uh, there as well as low flux and uh, we may have a plateau in the diffusion profile and in the case of uh, low permeability compounds and using large volume of the receptor chamber, then analytical detectability challenges are used. And as we can see here, different settings of the static cells, as well as uh, using a robotic arm for sampling, it, it is newly introduced by Teledyne. And uh, the second type of cells is the continuous uh, flow through cells. And uh, this is two types of cells that's available uh, so far. Uh, the first one using inline cells and inline cells, it's uh, using a small chamber, uh, receptor chamber uh, here, as, as you can see in the picture. And this chamber is designed uh, so that we have a laminar flow of the receptor media all the time through the uh, receiver chamber, which is clearing uh, the diffused drug from the membrane surface so that the flux is not uh, affected. And uh, it's more easy to obtain a steady state flux here, and uh, most of the diffusion profile in uh, in in, uh, in this type of cells uh, is uh, almost close to zero uh, diffusion kinetics. Uh, however, uh, some technical challenges or technical consideration should be also uh, considered when using these type of cells. Uh, the other type of cells is flow through cells, as we can see in the second picture. So this is uh, four types of cells that is uh, introduced by uh, Permagear. And this type of cells uh, are different uh, mainly in the uh, presence of sampling port, as well as uh, flow and the flow in and flow out of the media. However, in all of these types, it's using fixed volume of the receptor chamber, all of them as well as control temperature and adjustable flow rate. So talking about the flow through cell for diffusion, the flow rate of the media is, is one of the critical parameters because it's, it's affecting the flux significantly, as well as the diffusivity uh, of the compound through the uh, donor, uh, donor chamber or through the formulation matrix to the uh, receptor media. So some of the technical consideration for highly permeable drug using a high flow rate, this means that we are going to collect large volume of the permanent and large volume here. Uh, it may be easy to analyze, however, uh, analytical detectability may be a problem. Uh, and uh, low permeability compound using high flow rate analytical detectability also may be a problem here due to a massive uh, dilution of the drug in the receptor media. And in the case of low permeability drug with low flow rate, we may have better analytical detectability. However, because of the, this drug is low permeability as well as low flow rate is used in the diffusion settings, we may reach to a plateau or saturation of the tangential layer here uh, so that the flow rate is not enough to, to clear the tangential diffusion layer behind the membrane. And in this case, uh, some optimization of the diffusion settings is important uh, in order to have consistent results. So I will talk briefly about some of the technical challenges that is, uh, have been seen with uh, most of the diffusion testing. So the, the first technical challenge in design this type of testing is the uh, type of membrane to be used or permeation barrier. 
and the, the membrane that's used mostly in IVRT testing, uh, it is uh, highly permeable and it shouldn't be a rate controlling membrane so that the main function of this membrane is to keep the product uh, which is in the, in the donor chamber and the receptor media separate and distinct. Uh, meaning that there shouldn't be a backflow of the receptor media to the drug product as well as there shouldn't be a diffusion of some of the excipients to the receptor media, which is mainly a, a function of the viscosity of the drug product, as well as the molecular weight cutoff and other uh, characteristics of the membrane, such as uh, porosity, as well as uh, thickness and tortuosity of this membrane, as well as the material that's used to uh, manufacture this membrane itself that may interact with the uh, drug product. And uh, to identify a, a, a suitable membrane for IVRT testing, uh, first we we can talk about the bore size of this membrane, and uh, I would say the permeability uh, coefficient of uh, this membrane. So mostly bore size of 0.5 uh, micrometer plus minus 0.3. And uh, in most cases, we have seen uh, a membrane of uh, 0.45 or 0.22 uh, micrometer uh, bore size is used. And uh, using a membrane of a smaller bore size, it's used mainly to prevent uh, leakage of the drug product to the receiver media and to prevent the backflow. And uh, in this case, uh, optimization of the membrane uh, that's suitable for this type of formulation is important. Uh, another uh, challenge in selecting the membrane is uh, back diffusion. And diffusion, back diffusion of the receiver media to the drug product, it may affect the microstructure of the drug product and it may dilute. The, the the API in this drug product, which is affecting uh, the uh, flux, as well as uh, uh, like diffusion characteristics. So in this case, uh, a, a good membrane that's not allowing the this bag diffusion is important. And we have talked so much yesterday and day before about the binding and inertness characteristics of the membrane material. So interaction of the drug with the membrane material may give us uh, false negative results and it may extend the lag time. And this is mainly due to the membrane characteristics rather than it is uh, diffusion through the matrix. The, the, the type of the membrane material that's used, either hydrophobic or hydrophilic membrane, and this is depends on the type of formulation or type of the drug product. So complete weighting of the membrane by the drug product is expected so that uh, close contact or ultimate contact uh, between the drug product and the membrane is expected. So if the drug product is hydrophilic, so hydrophilic membrane is expected to be used and vice versa, as well as uh, chemical compatibility of the material uh, that's used in the membrane with the receptor solution so that no leachables is happening there that may interact with the drug product and affecting the uh, flux. So con consistent commercially available membrane also is, is recommended to use so that the same membrane is used for all the experiments related to this drug product. And for IVBT, various permeation barriers uh, are suggested in the literature, uh, such as excised human tissues and polymeric artificial membranes and animal tissues or engineered 3D can constructs. However, most of these uh, permeation media are questions uh, to represent the scan. So a lot of remarks are uh, uh, about this type of uh, membranes uh, should be discussed. Uh, for example, some of these membranes have higher uh, permeability coefficient compared to skin, and some of them also is not representing the skin. However, for IBT, excised skin samples is should be the main barrier for drug diffusion, either dermatomed skin or fresh uh, dermatomed cadaver, human cadaver skin or fresh skin may be used. So when using the skin, evaluation of the permeability and integrity of the stratum corneum is uh, very important and the different methods are used for testing the barrier integrity of the skin sample used in this type of experiments. 
and using uh, tritated water permeation or uh, transepidermal water loss, as well as electrical conductance uh, across the skin may be used. And each method should have its test parameter and acceptance criteria and suitability for different applications. Uh, skin sickness also is very important and it should be consistent uh, for all uh, skis, uh, skin specimen uh, from the same donor. And uh, some of the APIs are partitioned in the skin itself and forming a reservoir in the skin. So skin sickness become a very important factor here that's affecting diffusion. And uh, considering skin sickness in the diffusion equation may be appropriate uh, in order to standardize the, uh, the, the diffusion or the permeation uh, data. So assignment of uh, skin specimens around uh, like uh, uh, from, from the same donor to each of the treatment group, for example, test and reference product should be randomized as feasible, as well as the ethical and legal consideration for using skin sample should be considered. So second, the challenge is, is mainly talking about the receptor solution. As uh, I have discussed in the diffusion uh, mechanism, uh, the, the solubility of API in the receptor solution is the most important as well as the stability of API. Uh, so that the selection of the, the receptor solution for IVRT testing uh, is, is very important. Some uh, solubility modifiers can be used, uh, such as organic solvents, surfactant, and bovine serum albumin, for example, lipids and polymer may be used. And as we can have, as we can, as we can see here in the figure, using uh, the same um, the same amount of the organic, the same amount of different organic solvents can change flux. For example, methanol and ethanol used at uh, 25 uh, at 75 percent as well as increasing the hydrophobicity of the receptor solution is giving us completely different slope. So uh, optimization of the polarity of the receptor solution in order to ensure a same condition and the steady state flux is important in selecting the receptor solution, as well as for chromatographic analysis. So the aqueous miscibility and suitability and the extraction uh, of API from uh, the media might, uh, it, it may need to be done uh, so that detectability can be achieved. So effect of uh, uh, salt uh, species as well as concentration, as well as pH of the receptor solution and diffusion kinetic should be considered. And uh, for IVBT, it is the same uh, consideration I mentioned in IVRT, however, uh, some more points uh, need to be discussed here, uh, which is compatibility with uh, skin. So the solubility modifier shouldn't affect the integrity of the permeation uh, barrier of skin. Uh, for example, uh, using uh, so much alcohol or detergent can deform this skin. And uh, as Dr. Rani mentioned in his presentation, that uh, 0.02 of uh, OLIS20 may not be affecting the integrity function of skin, and it is mainly recommended for IVBT testing. As well as including antimicrobial agent is essential to prevent the bacterial decomposition of the uh, stratum corneum and dermis and epidermis through the study duration. Another technical challenge is the use of uh, dose applicators in order to apply the dose. So various dispensing devices may be used uh, to apply the dose, uh, and we have seen many applications that using uh, syringes or uh, dispensing straws and the positive displacement the pipettes. And uh, the choice of using uh, any of these uh, dispensing device, it mainly depending on the volume or quantity to be used, as well as accuracy of uh, this dispensing device. So, so the error margin of using any of these dispensing device uh, should be considered for consistent uh, diffusion data, uh, as well as the application technique. So as the dose is applied to the membrane or skin surface, and then it is spread uh, over uh, this membrane to a certain area, uh, a lot of errors uh, may be happening here so, and a lot of challenges uh, regarding uh, wetting of the neck of the donor uh, chamber and uh, this amount that is spread over the glass of the wall uh, of the donor chamber is not contributing to the permeation or the diffusion uh, experiment. 
and in this case we may have uh, false uh, results uh, as well as the amount that is uh, dosed uh, either finite dosing uh, for ivbt or infinite dosing i'm sorry finite dosing or infinite uh, dosing uh, as well as uh, running the experiment under occlusion or non-occlusion condition and uh, non-occlusion is mainly used for ivbt and occlusion is used for ivrt and uh, generally, for the dose application, uh, different controls should be regarded. Uh, for example, the area of dose application, the dose amount and dosing technique, as well as dose duration, spreading method, and blinding and randomization procedure for the dose application should be considered for statistically acceptable data, as well as uh, the differences in the dosing technique. We know that it may alter the metamorphosis and uh, it may not completely wet the surface. So appropriate spreading uh, technique uh, should be considered. And uh, we know that inconsistency in the diameter of the area dose they may result in error in the flux. And uh, in the table uh, to the right here, we can see different application methods that's used for in different uh, uh, dosage forms and for different quantities, as well as different removal methods uh, that can be used in order to remove the remaining uh, <coughs> Uh, formulation at the membrane surface or skin surface for uh, uh, mass balance study that may be needed to be done after the diffusion experiment. So another technical challenge is uh, sample collection. And to, as we can see, different methods for sample collections uh, are used depending on the type of diffusion ex uh, apparatus as well as the application uh, that's used for. Uh, for example, uh, fine needles with long stock may be used for manual sampling of uh, diffusion cells, and fractional, fractional collectors is used for flow through uh, cells. Automated samples, uh, sampling is used in many of uh, diffusion experiments, and uh, there is a lot of concerns about the automated samples as well. And uh, there is uh, different guidelines uh, by FDA as well as uh, CFR for handling and retention of uh, testing uh, samples. And Dr. Rani mentioned uh, about it in details yesterday. So some of the concerns about the sampling methods that adequate sampling time interval, frequency, and volume should be used. And uh, mainly for the sampling frequency, as well as uh, time interval and distribution over the diffusion experiment course, it's very important. Uh, for example, uh, the, the the maximum flux that we are determining, it depends on the sample uh, that's collected. However, the actual maximum flux may be before or after the sample. So some preliminary experiments are done in order to determine the region or the period where the maximum flux is there. And then more frequent sampling is done around this uh, period so that we can determine the, uh, uh, the actual uh, Perme uh, actual uh, maximum flux or maximum permeation that's happening there. However, we know that frequent sampling uh, may affect the flux by uh, changing the dilution of the receptor media as well as it may interrupt the steady state uh, diffusion. And uh, we should also consider for uh, flow through diffusion cells the dead volumes in the length of the tubing and the priming the tubing uh, before each sample is important and uh, some of the diffusion cells may be needed. And uh, the use of post pressure for automated samples and it's used for many of the diffusion uh, apparatus. Uh, it may affect the skin, skin integrity by forming a dooming uh, behavior of the skin. And this dooming behavior is stretching the skin and uh, it may affect the integrity of the stratum corneum as a membrane barrier. And uh, for IVBT, uh, whole media replacement uh, may produce uh, inconsistency, of, in, inconsistency of the contact of the receiver media with the dermis uh, side of the skin. And uh, in this case, it may cause disturbance of the steady state uh, flux and uh, some also optimization about whole media replacement uh, may be needed. And uh, as you can see here in this uh, figure, uh, this is uh, IVBT testing that is done uh, from same donor uh, uh, skin samples as well as to the same drug product and same dose applied. And as you can see, 
for aliquot sampling, there is a fluctuation uh, that's happening in the flux. However, for a whole major replacement, we may have more consistent uh, diffusion uh, profile. So a lot of remarks about uh, the disturbance that's happening also by aliquot sampling, by positive pressure uh, that's used for sampling, and how this samples uh, is replaced uh, while maintaining the same uh, concentration. Uh, so, so we have a lot of discussion about uh, the, the reasons about this fluctuation in the flux by aliquot sampling, and this had been discussed also in, in the session of statistical consideration for uh, diffusion testing in the first day. So after talking about these technical challenges, uh, the selection of the best receptor uh, solution, as well as other diffusion test parameters should be based on. First is the top end drop off or plateauing. Uh, so adjust of sampling schedule may be appropriate, as well as the lag time and contribution of the membrane or the permeation barrier to the lag time should be considered. And what is the linearity of uh, release? Uh, what is the slope and the coefficient of variation for this linearity? And what is the magnitude of a slope or the flux for permeation, slope for release and flux for permeation? Uh, so is it a real uh, maximum flux? And this is a steady state uh, for the slope. And uh, the coefficient for variation of, for these slopes among replicates of the diffusion cells and we need to identify a cutoff for accept acceptability of the slopes, as well as uh, we are preferring to use higher ratio of uh, maximum uh, solubility of API in the receptor solution relative to the minimum uh, API solubility in this receptor solution and <coughs> avoid uh, in IVRT testing the API depletion so that we can have a slope of a steady state uh, diffusion. And we need also to consider the matrix compatibility with HPLC analysis. So the last sorry, part. Of... Sorry, Dr. Zidane, uh, just a gentle reminder. Um, I think you only have um, five minutes. OK, so I, I just have like two slides, so I'll finish quickly. So for the apparatus qualification, uh, we know that it is very important to qualify the apparatus that's used for diffusion testing. and. Uh, different like certificates like uh, installation qualification, operational qualification and performance qualification should be there. And the USP chapter uh, 1724 independently specifies uh, some consideration regarding the design of the uh, apparatus and regarding to the diameter of this orifice that it should be within 5% and should be the same for donor and receptor chamber. And it may vary depends on the application. And uh, all the vertical diffusion cells should have the same nominal uh, values for design parameter, and it should be a representative uh, uh, volumes or same volumes is used for all the cells. So an installation qualification protocol should be there and operational qualification protocol also should be there. And this is for each experiment to be done. So the key takeaways of my presentation is that adequate diffusion testing of topical products may be achieved by coupling an appropriate diffusion apparatus with a well-planned experimental protocol with clear objectives, what we need uh, to get from this ex uh, diffusion experiment. So adequate control over the instrumental and uh, test parameters beforehand will reduce the number of failed attempts and produce consistency between experiments. And we should, have, we should have also an updated validation protocols and acceptance criteria should exist for each run. And we need to ask ourselves some question before attempting any diffusion experiments. What is the critical physical chemical characteristics of EPI and the formulation that will be involved in this uh, diffusion experiment? And what is the expected diffusion kinetics? And what is the appropriate diffusion apparatus to be used? Once this is determined, then what is the critical diffusion test condition in terms of the dosing parameters? What is the membrane or permeation barrier to be used? What is the receptor solution condition uh, composition as well as other criteria? And uh, is there uh, is the apparatus is qualified for this test or not? And what is the sampling parameter as well as what is the parameter for results collection and interpretation. So all of these should be answered before any attempt at any diffusion experiment. So I am finishing by acknowledging my colleagues in OPQ as well as OGD 
uh, of FDA for their help uh, as with uh, a lot of diffusion experiments that we have done here on many drug products. And thank you for listening to my presentation.